Yeah, hello. Uh, today I'd like to talk about um, direct observation of pruning errors, a search analysis tool, and uh, effectively this is work that was done by Volker Steinwiss, uh, myself, and Hermann Ney. And for the talk, I've prepared the following outline. So first, I would like to start with a brief introduction on search in general. Then I will um, continue with pruning, and especially pruning errors. We will see some concepts, how to define pruning errors, and then talk about the detection of pruning errors. We will see some shortcomings, and then uh, propose a novel approach, how to handle pruning errors. Um, before we come to the experimental results, I'd like to have a short excursus on the RWTH decoder. Uh, I think this is beneficial for understanding the experimental results. And then um, we will see first the search error analysis and also related to that the search space analysis. And finally, I will give some conclusions and outline future work. Uh, so search and automatic speed recognition usually uh, just means that we want to maximize uh, this equation here. So the posterior probability of the word sequence given the acoustic observations and we can factorize this into the language model and the uh, acoustic model. And uh, it's really, uh, it should be really um, noted that this is just a search problem or an optimization problem. And uh, in principle, we can use any algorithm that gives us uh, a solution for this uh, optimization problem. And uh, an overview, for example, is given in the paper by Aubert from 2002. Um, this includes, for example, stack decoding uh, algorithms or weighted finite state transducer search algorithms. Uh, yeah, but here in this particular case, we want to concentrate on the so-called history conditioned lexical tree search, which is, for example, um, presented in the paper by Nye and Ortmans from 1999. And the complexity of a full search can be roughly characterized uh, by this uh, big O notation. So it's uh, linear in the length of the time signal in capital T. But it's also linear in the number of hidden Markov model states, which result from the lexicon, and uh, the number of engrams in the language model. And uh, this is really, even though it's kind of just linear, it's a really a very, very huge, because there can be billions of engrams and uh, hundreds of millions of uh, hidden Markov model states, and also the uh, time sequence can be rather long. And so uh, the result is that we have to do something to reduce the search space size. And this usually means that we have to apply some pruning technique. And at this point, it should be stressed that this is just a heuristic uh, for reducing the search effort. So maybe not so perfectly well designed. And um, usually, there are also some pruning parameters. And we have to somehow uh, choose them empirically. So what is common practice is that we draw some word error rate versus real-time factor curves. And so we more or less decide how much computation time do we want to spend to obtain a certain uh, level of quality in terms of recognition and accuracy. And um, obviously, this has some problems. So first of all, if we do pruning, then we may lose the optimum word sequence, uh, which is indicated here by the W1 up to capital N with a hat symbol. So it may not be found. We lose this, uh, even though the models uh, would give us a better, uh, better result. And uh, second, there are only indirect consequences that we will eventually observe uh, when we have these pruning errors. Uh, so the goal of this work is actually to have a more detailed and especially non-heuristic analysis. And uh, for this, we should first um, decide what do we call a pruning error. And here, I've put several definitions. So the first, actually, is probably the one which is most widely accepted. And it just means um, a pruning error occurs when we prune a hypothesis that would have resulted in the globally optimal path. So the globally optimal path here is denoted by this state sequence with a hat. And the set of uh, hypothesis pruned up to this time step t here is uh, denoted by capital P. And if for some time step uh, this one has been pruned, then we call this a pr um, pruning error. Another possibility would be that we define this in terms of the word error rate, which is probably what is uh, more closely related to what is done in practice. So then we say a pruning error occurs when we prune a hypothesis that results in an additional recognition error. So if we uh, consider this in a very formal way, then that this would uh, probably look like this, that um, we say, OK, there exists uh, one of the optimum states, which is pruned at some time step. And uh, for all other sequences that the search uh, can still find uh, that do not include the state, the word error rate is higher than the best one. Uh, okay, obviously, just a single state would not be the um, 
uh, usually does not uh, result in a single rec in, uh, many recognition errors. But uh, well, I think this is uh, the basic idea behind this uh, definition. Uh, because usually, uh, if you prune a single state, then this will also result in uh, missing states in the subsequent time steps. And um, so generally, these uh, common approaches ha incur several problems. Uh, the first one, which was related to the exhaust um, to the globally optimal path, just means that we need an exhaustive search, which is more or less impossible. And uh, the second one, where we concentrate on the word error rate uh, differences, is rather immature because there may also be helpful pruning errors. So the word error rate may uh, increase or decrease even though um, we have a larger search space. And um, on the other hand, we can also try to detect this. Uh, so the first kind, what we can do, for example, is we can compute a forced alignment. And then we will obtain some scores. We could also manually include some language model scores. And then we can compare this rec with the recognition scores. And if we find that uh, the scores from the uh, forced alignment are better than the scores from the recognition result, then we know that we have obtained a pruning error. But obviously, this is just a sufficient condition, and it's not really necessary that uh, if we make a pruning error, this uh, condition here holds. And for the second type, which is word error rate related, um, we could run a series of experiments and then compute just the error rates. But as I said, this is not so satisfying, maybe. And uh, for this reason, I'd like to present a novel definition of a pruning error. So this is number three. And we say um, such a pruning, a pruning error occurs when we prune a hypothesis that would have resulted in the globally optimal path through the spoken word sequence. So the emphasis in this case lies on the spoken. And we will uh, shortly see what is actually meant by this. Uh, spoken, the spoken state sequence now is indicated by this uh, sequence S bar from 1 up to capital T, so the full time sequence. And uh, I should mention that the assumption here is that uh, the spoken word sequence, so the manual transcription, is actually known. And uh, with this definition, we actually come to the following proposed approach. So the first step is that we compute the spoken state sequence, uh, S bar from 1 up to capital T, by a forced alignment of the spoken word sequence. So this also defines uh, the spoken state sequence in terms of the spoken word sequence. And then uh, what we do is we uh, keep track for each time frame of first the alignment HMM state, which is kind of the spoken state, and then also the preceding words, which is important because this identifies the language model history that is later then used in the search. And this means that in the recognition pass, we will keep track of this information with, and especially whether uh, the spoken state and the, with the spoken history has been pruned or not. And then we can do some statistics and eventually uh, evaluate the results. And uh, this we will see in the experimental uh, results. But before we come to that, uh, I'd like to come to the X curses uh, that I mentioned. So at RWTH, the decoder that we use is the so-called history condition tree search. And uh, this means that the search space is organized as a prefix tree. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, we have uh, in this lexicon the words say, speak, speech, spell, and tell. And uh, they, are just, um, they just share common prefixes. For example, the S is um, uh, tied between all these words here that start with an S. Obviously, uh, in a real decoder system, you wouldn't use these uh, phonemes here, but just uh, tight HMM states. And um, so this just defines uh, the search space in terms of words. but if we do this and uh, also including the language model context, then we would have a copy uh, of this tree here for any language model state. And uh, so we basically associate a state hypothesis with uh, such a tree here and in addition with the language model context. And uh, also what we use is the so-called language model look ahead as a site information so we basically distribute the language model information over the whole tree here um, so that we can incorporate the language model information as early as possible. And uh, we will also later see in the experimental section how this uh, shows up in, in the search space and the corresponding scores. Uh, also, I'd like to quickly mention the pruning methods that we use. So 
This are basically the acoustic pruning and the language model pruning, uh, which are rather simple. So we have uh, the probability of the overall best uh, state hypothesis uh, at a given time t. So this is denoted by this QAC. And then we just have to empirically define a factor. In this case, this is our pruning parameter, this FAC. And we say that we uh, discard any hypothesis uh, whose score, which is denoted by this QH, this, these are the history words, and S uh, is the hidden Markov model state. So we will um, prune any state which has a score uh, probability which is lower than the best one times this uh, factor which is usually less than one. And uh, we basically have the same pruning method uh, for the so-called language model pruning which uh, looks very similar, the equations here. Uh, the only difference is that we only do this uh, pruning at the word start states. That's why we have this uh, S equals equal to zero. Uh, equivalent, you, you can also define this in terms of the word end state because, I mean, whether you're at the end or at the word, this is more or less the same because then you have to restart the word. And <clears throat> so these are the pruning methods uh, that will be uh, examined. And uh, in terms of the state space, we have here also, um, this is also important to um, analyze in more detail and why we see, why this is the case we see on the right because here we see a profiling of our decoder. And um, what is rather striking is that most of the search effort goes into this red bar here and also the yellow one. So these are the state expansion process and also the acoustic model. And both are directly related to the evaluation uh, uh, to the number of, yeah, to the size of the current uh, state space. So the number of non-pruned hypotheses. And yeah, therefore um, it's important to have a precise picture of, uh, uh, of this uh, space because this will have a direct influence on the speed of the decoder. Uh, now let's continue with the experimental results. <clears throat> the um, results have been carried out with the RWTH English uh, European Parliament plenaries uh, session system. And uh, this system obtained uh, good results on the TC star evaluation campaign. And uh, so the acoustic data was uh, for the recognition. These were 2.9 uh, hours. And the, engram, uh, the number of engrams in the language model are 7 million, so it's not so large. I think it was a <coughs> um, constraint task. The vocabulary size is uh, around 50K, and the OV rate is 0.0, .0 and this results in a word error rate of 14.7%. I should mention that we uh, intentionally um, decreased the word error rate to uh, the OV rate um, to 0%. Uh, the reason is that this is uh, beneficial for the experiments, as you will uh, see very soon for the analysis. So then <clears throat> we don't have to deal with uh, the effects of uh, out of vocabulary uh, problems. And um, yeah, we just did a single pass uh, recognition with uh, VTLN adaptation. So here we see an example output of uh, the tool that I'm presenting. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, the font size here is very small, but I can't really increase it because otherwise, uh, well, it doesn't fit on the screen. Uh, therefore, I'd like to read it out. Um, so here it says uh, that the council will speed up the work on a framework decision on the agency of fundamental rights. So this is the transcribed word sequence. And uh, below, what we can see is the recognized word sequence, which is actually the same except for one recognition error. So you will notice that here, it said on and it should have said uh, end. And uh, also this uh, results in a slightly shift of uh, the word boundaries. So the dashed red line indicates the recognized word boundaries and the blue one is kind of the correct uh, word boundary. And below we find these uh, three uh, uh, curves. So the first one just is um, the score of the spoken state hypothesis. So basically this means uh, if we would prune at such uh, relative um, score, uh, relative to the best uh, score, then we would have no pruning errors uh, according to our definition. And here we have the same information as absolute numbers. So this is the number of uh, state hypotheses which are actually better, which have a lower score than uh, the spoken state score. And uh, finally, at the end, we have the overall number of uh, state hypotheses. So this ranges up to 500, so it's roughly half a million. Um, but it's before pruning. So yeah, that's the number of state hypotheses that, that actually gets investigated during search uh, per time frame. 
uh, at a, a very low pruning. Uh, okay, um, and well, let's see why um, I'd like to talk um, why a search analysis in terms of uh, states is also beneficial. And here on the left, I have uh, the evaluation on the word error rate level, and on the right, it's on the spoken state level. And what we can observe is that here, this curve is rather uh, insensitive uh, if we stick to the right. So if we have a very loose pruning, then we don't see any changes in the word error rate. And this somehow seems to indicate that uh, we don't do any pruning errors. But if we have a look at the right, then we see that this is not the case. So here we, we actually reveal that there are many pruning errors because uh, lots of pruning, uh, lots of spoken states get lost by pruning. Um, um, and also this curve, I, you can't really see this very well, but uh, if you would zoom in, then you would uh, observe that it's uh, also a bit noisy. So if we increase the pruning threshold, then we still get uh, sometimes a bit more errors. And so this picture somehow, um, yeah, somehow uh, shows that uh, the um, analysis on a state level is um, more appropriate in this case. Uh, I'd now uh, switch to the state space. And um, what we have done here is that we have uh, made an analysis in terms of uh, the score. So we have put the scores of the hypothesis that we um, have computed uh, into several bins. And we see that we have this uh, exponential growth. So there are uh, increasingly more hypotheses if the score gets worse. Uh, and here at the top end, it uh, flattens a bit out. This is just due to pruning because we remove uh, all the hypotheses that are above this level of 400. And uh, on the right, we see uh, the behavior for the spoken state sequences. And this uh, is actually good news because uh, we see that, well, mo the vast majority of them have a score of zero and it exponentially decreases uh, with increasing scores. So really most of the time, the score of the spoken state hypothesis is really good. And I think what is quite interesting here is that even if we do a tight pruning, then we would uh, end up having around 21,000 uh, hypotheses, so after pruning, um, but only 637 on average are better than the spoken one. So this somehow seems uh, to show that the pruning is not really, even though we use our state-of-the-art pruning methods, uh, the pruning is not really very tight. I mean, you could, at least in theory, this is some kind of a lower bound, um, reduce your search space by a factor of 30 and still not do any pruning errors, at least on the average. And, um, well, as we do um, a lexical prefix uh, tree search, um, I'd also like to show the results uh, of the other the search space in terms of the prefix tree. Uh, so here, uh, again, on the left, we have the results for, the, for all states and on the right for the spoken states. And we see, and this also confirms results from a previous work from Aubert, uh, that the search space is very much concentrated in the uh, first uh, phoneme. So if we only take the first two phonemes, then we have around 60% of the search effort in within the first two phonemes. And if we go to the first seven phonemes, it's even uh, uh, 99%. And uh, what you will notice are these, uh, these drops here. It's always after three uh, states. And this just is due to the fact that we have used a three state uh, HML model. So after three phonemes, um, uh, after three states, uh, a word may possibly end. And uh, then, uh, well, this uh, explains why we have less states uh, uh, after these multiples of three. And on the right, we see the same for the spoken st uh, state sequence, and this basically follows the average length distribution of words. Uh, yeah, let's also talk um, about the word hypothesis uh, search space, which is uh, related to a uh, language model pruning. So the observation is, uh, I have not shown this here as a separate plot, um, that there are no real conceptual differences um, between the scores of state and word hypothesis. So this would uh, actually look very similar to this curve here if we do it for the word hypothesis, so at the word ends. But um, uh, if we closer have a look at the um, spoken state sequences, or sp sp um, spoken score states, then we see that we have this uh, decreasing score here over time. And this is also very beneficial for the search because uh, it means that um, if we are at word ends, then we have more advanced on this curve here. And then the spoken state score 
is, uh, gets smaller and smaller uh, compared to the other ones. And uh, so this allows us actually to have a much tighter pruning at the word ends. And that's why this somehow explains why we can eventually apply a language model pruning. Uh, by the way, these uh, red numbers here indicate how many words uh, uh, have been found in the uh, recognition corpus uh, which relate to this uh, uh, word start time or this, uh, for this time. Uh, yeah, with this slide, um, I'd like to conclude the experimental section. Um, so I've presented a tool for the observation of the effects of pruning, and also we have done an analysis uh, on the state hypothesis level and explained why this is uh, beneficial in comparison to uh, uh, the standard classic word error rate approach, which is usually done. Um, our experiments have shown the validity of this approach. Um, to some extent, uh, we can say that Maybe pruning methods are not really at the limit because there are so many, um, uh, there's such a difference between the spoken state uh, space and the full uh, state space. But uh, obviously it's not so simple uh, how to come up with a pruning method that will actually exploit this uh, because um, this is a rather dynamic search space and it only holds on the average and not uh, at a specific time step, uh, time stamp. And um, the concept that we have presented here is rather general, so it's also applicable to other decoders like uh, weighted finite state transducers and other search problems. And uh, for future work, we could also um, use this tool for um, analyzing the location of errors. And uh, finally, uh, what would also be interesting, um, we could come up with a pruning method that uh, involves more parameters, and then we could use this tool here for the calibration of this pruning methods. Uh, yeah, I've also put some references here that are related to the work uh, that I've presented. And yeah, at this point, I'd like to thank you for your attention.
I mean, at the beginning of the work, we have uh, the least uh, possible amount of information which words we are currently recognizing. And this also explains why we have uh, this peak here, because um, uh, if we include this uh, language model score at this point, uh, it's very large, and uh, we have to compare such hypothesis, which already includes this uh, language model score, with other hypotheses, which are hypothesized at the same time, that do not include this uh, language model peak, because they are still at the end of the world. And so I think this is one of the effects that we have up here. And yeah, this also is uh, one of the um, places where errors or locations where errors occur. Yes, and, and this is uh, related in an earlier slide you, you had an equation where you said uh, we are looking at s equal to zero, uh, equal to zero, and that is precisely the sound of the word, but then at the end yeah. you said that the um, pruning is most, uh, the pruning uh, or the search time you spent is uh, highest at the beginning of the, the word. Uh, yeah. So if you, if you want to to relax the constraints about the beginning, you will increase in, in the coding time. So, uh, do you understand what I mean? Uh, why do you say um, if we relax it? Because um, if we relax, you mean increasing the pruning pressure at the beginning. But then we have increased pruning. Yeah. Uh, so um, I don't understand the question, sorry. If, if, you, if you are uh, likely to make errors at uh, s equals zero, uh, in order to decrease the errors, you, you should um, consider beyond s equal zero, go, uh, go uh, uh, further into the word style. Uh, yes, um, yeah. yeah, maybe we should also um, refine the search uh, about the, or the pruning in terms of the word mm -hmm. um, and Take this knowledge into <coughs> So you said that you had the um, OED rate of 10 percent. Yes. And so does that mean that the, the correct solution must be reachable in the in the search space? No. Uh, and, and what do you do if there are multiple correct solutions? Uh, so first, um, we the only reason why we did this doesn't it's not really necessary, but I mean we do some kind of analysis here and uh, if. Uh, some of the words from the transcription is not really accessible by the lexicon, then, well, this whole um, approach, uh, I mean, we compute the first line, then it doesn't really make so much sense. I would say it still works, but, um, well, at least for this kind of analysis, we thought it's not so interesting. And usually you have, I mean, the whole um, approach relies on the fact that you have the uh, manual transcription, so it's rather easy to uh, fulfill this condition. I don't think it's really a constraint. And um, for machine translation, um, well, I I really can't say um, whether this would interfere. Well, we haven't investigated in this context, and therefore I can't say um, whether this would be. Because the problem yeah. is that you cannot enumerate all the possible solutions, like all the correct yeah. solutions. Uh, yeah, that's true. But I mean, usually you have um, just a finite number of hypotheses, so maybe you can just do this. Uh, uh, multiple times. Can do something yeah, yeah. For example, you can maybe somehow average then the error analysis over the individual. That would just be an, an initial guess what you could do in this case. I mean, if you have some multiple uh, some multiple references, then yeah, you do it maybe like this. Yeah, the last
And on the other hand, we never know um, whether the uh, hypothesis, hypothesis we are looking at, whether it actually is the spoken hypothesis, and whether we are at the, word end, the correct word end or not. And I think this makes it a little bit difficult. Maybe you could maybe tell you this two different portions of the search space differently. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think you're right. Yes, um, we could do this, or we could try it along this. Uh, on this road. Uh, 